Today we're checking out some incredible Figma tricks, tips and hacks collected from all across the internet and some of these are so impressive I've started to use them daily in my Figma regime. Now this won't be possible without all the wonderful people in the community. I'll put all the Twitter links in the description. You can check out these wonderful people who have snagged some of these tips from. Now the first one is actually a new feature in Figma. The spell check is finally here. So whenever you've highlighted a piece of text or you're typing around, this red line will appear under any misspelled information or text. It'll show me the actual spelling. Apart from that, you can also check preferences for languages as well as add to dictionary. So you have all the spell check and dictionary options that you would find in any other good text editor. I absolutely love the way they've implemented it. It's super fast and it's super neat. The next tip is actually a plugin which works around this feature, this text edit feature. The Magician plugin will now allow you to just type in a piece of text and it converts that text into better text. If you're writing a heading or any sort of UX copy, this will help you out a lot. So I suggest get in with the Magician plugin. It's super useful. The next one actually blew my mind. So if you hit Command P or Control P on your keyboard and you inside this, you search for resource use click on resource use, it will stick a nice little properties window right here in real time. So whenever you are creating something, as you can see, it's changing, it's uploading something to the Figma's cloud. So whenever you add something new, it will add here, right here as well, as well as it will show you how heavy the file is. We often have these heavy Figma files, which are huge. Above 2 GB, your Figma files are absolutely useless. So this helps you keep track of how much information there is, how many layers there are, as well as the uploads that are happening in real time. You can remove this at any time by double clicking it. Simple. You want to rename multiple layers or multiple frames at the same time. How do you do that? Select all the layers you want to rename. Press Command R or Control R on Windows. You now have a rename pop-up right here. You can select what names it should match with. Otherwise, you can just say rename to box. And I can even say number down, number descending or number ascending. So this will now have box one, two, three or box three to one and multiple numbers you can start creating. You can even set the start sequence of where it should start from. It should start from one, two, five, whatever. And then you just say rename. And as you can see, it's set up the name according to what we wanted. I think that's really cool. Now, oftentimes we want to pick colors quickly. So the quickest way to pick color is say click on whatever you want to recolor. Say control C on your keyboard. This will bring up a nice little color picker, which is built in into Figma and that will just recolor. So rather than going to fill, then clicking on this color picker, that is the fastest way to get to the color picker. Since we're talking about colors, you don't need to remember the hex values for all the colors. You can actually put color names. So if I want to put in red, I can say R-E-D in the fill tab on the right, and it puts a default red. If I want blue, it will put in blue. If I want something like crimson, some something specific, it will also put in crimson. If I want something like orange, it will even give me that. Any time it fails to do something like that, for example, I say carrot orange, it will just go back to a default gray. I think that's fair enough. Cool little way to add color without knowing what hex value is there. And this could even act like a little hunt for your color. Just put in a random name and see what comes out. Another Figma update has come out and they have added this little link icon to the top right. So if you click on this link, it just copies a quick public link for your Figma file, depending of course on the share settings that you've set up. Now, most of your files on Figma will have this boring old icon right here. But what if you wanted to organize with, with unique icons that you wanted? Easy. Right click on whichever file you're looking at, say rename and put in whatever emoji you like. For example, I have this bomb emoji. I'll put this in space and enter. And as you can see on the left, I'll zoom in. There's this bomb icon instead of the boring old Figma icon right next to my the name of my favorite file here. I think this is absolutely brilliant. I'll even put up a little tip here behind me, which shows Ashish doing something like this, but for, you know, component variants, etc. I think it's really, really useful. Emojis can be used in so many ways and Figma is allowing us to do that. Oftentimes you want to create an arc using a circle. You just create a circle and there will be another little circle which says arc. 
just press on it and drag it. You can create a lined circular arc by just clicking on this little circle in between after doing that and dragging out. So now you have this level indicator. This is absolutely the easiest way to create these indicators or loading bars, etc. The next tip is for auto layout. If you have any component or element inside an auto layout frame or anything, you can change between fill or hug real quick. All you need to do is alt or option on your keyboard and double click on the edges like this. See, so quickly it changes from hug to fill and you can do vice versa as well. For parents, you can do the same thing by saying command or control on your keyboard and double clicking on one of these edges and it hugs to the actual element inside. So I think this is really cool and this can be really useful. This can be really useful, especially when you're tackling with auto layout. I think you've always ignored this little question mark at the bottom right, right here. If I click this, there will be some really useful tricks right in this. You can quickly go to their support forum, their YouTube channel, or you can check out their release notes. You can even submit feedback or ask the community for help. Apart from that, they also have a complete keyboard shortcut view at the bottom right here like this. So there are keyboard shortcuts for everything and they've arranged it into different categories like this. I think that's super useful. You can even change your keyboard layout if you want from right here. We're often changing the size of elements from this right properties panel right here. Now, did you know you can drag to increase or decrease any property if it is in a number format? So for example, I want to increase the width of this little rectangle. I hover over the W in the width tab right here and I increase or decrease it real quick. Isn't that super useful? You can do the same for things like border radius as well, as well as things like percentages increase or decrease the opacity like this. So remember to always hover over the edge of any element like this. So an arrow like this appears. I think this is super useful. Did you know Figma has GIF support in it? Yep, it's super easy. Just drag in whatever GIF you want. For example, I like this GIF and I'm just dragged it in. I click on play and it will immediately start playing my little GIF right here. See, that's super, super simple and super nice. You can use this with any Lottie based animations as well, as long as it ends with .gif, which is the GIF format. The next one's again for auto layout and this is by Nitish. So thank you Nitish for that. If you click on any auto layout based element right here, you want the padding to be equal on top and left, hover over whatever value you want to equate, say command and then click on any of these values, it will bring up a box like this. Just click on any normal value, say 20, and it will give 20 padding to all sides. So if you want equal padding on all sides, this is the best trick. Resizing stuff has been made so simple in Figma right now. Now all you need to do is click on K on your keyboard and on the right you'll get these scales. So if I want to double something, I just click on 2x and it doubles it. I, I click on 5x and it makes it five times the scale. As well as you can change which direction it is scaling from. So if it should scale from the top left like this, it will scale from there or if it should scale from the center. This can be super useful when also doing prototyping and animation. Since we're talking about numbers, do you know you can do maths in these frame numbers right here? So if I click on four by 412, which is the width, I say into two or star two, it will now actually be double of the size. If I divide it, by two, it will be half of the size. This isn't a Figma tip, but I saw it and I had to mention it. You can quickly now convert any link of a Figma file into a complete coded out project. Just copy the link here and translate for free. It's called function 12 and I think it's really cool. Now to close down this video, there is actually a plugin that will have a lot of these tips that I showed you guys. Apart from that, it'll have tutorials and tips for each part of Figma. It's called Figma Tips by Roji himself. So you know this is an authentic plugin from Figma itself. So go ahead, check out Figma Tips. And the best part is it opens inside your Figma file. I hope you like this quick little video. I would really appreciate a thumbs up on this video. It makes my day and tell me in the comments which tip did you like the most or any tips that you would like to give the community. Until next time, take care. God bless.